Dan gaan we maar welkom bij Koeka Sport. Vandaag doen we een 1-2'tje met Jacob Montes, uh, speler van Wasan Beveren, uitgeleend door Crystal Palace en Georgetown alumni. Ik ga direct uitleggen wat dat betekent. Ik ben uw host, Brian Zwaars Duarte, en we zijn hier met Alex. Vandaag uh, gaan we deze episode doen in het Engels, want Jacob spreekt alleen maar Engels. So um, let's make the transition right now. It was a long ass intro. That's cool. Listen, yeah, yeah. now I did it without it stress. Though. I did it. I just it I, sounded good. It see, sounded good. <laughs> he's a hater, good. fam. I, I keep telling you this from day one. He's a hater. Fam. <laughs> now, but Jacob, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Appreciate it. Thank uh, you for let's, having me. Let's talk about yourself. Yeah. So you came from the Amer- from America to Europe. How was that? Uh, I mean. Life-wise, it's uh, it's a bit of an adjustment. Obviously, um, I came here. I'm uh, just I've been in in the hotel, you know, just isolated, kind of making new friends. Obviously, it was good that I knew you before I got here. Um, that helped a lot. But yeah, I mean, football-wise, I'm just trying to do what I can to obviously kind of make a name up for myself on the team um, here in Belgium, um, and hopefully see how that goes further. Have you learned to say football and have you forgotten about saying soccer yet? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I think when I got to Palace, when I was uh, on trial there, uh, that obviously no one says soccer there. If, yeah. if you say soccer there, they will, you know, kind of get, get on you. So, uh, yeah, I definitely, I think I've adapted to saying football for sure. Yeah. Because, <clears throat> you so your alumni from Georgetown, wasn't, yeah. what does that mean, alumni? That just means you attended the school, you got your degree, you graduated. Um, But you've done, you done the whole four years. Yeah, I finished my four years. I got my degree in Bachelor of uh, Bachelor of Arts Sociology degree. Um, yeah, so I'm a, an alumni of Georgetown Wait, University. Yeah. Is it common for football? Well, I'll, I'll say soccer. No, you can say, soccer say football, please. <laughs> no, because then it might be like weird, my question. But is it common for soccer players to go to the school, finish The, like the the studies have the degree and then go on or is it more common to try to go into the draft system as early as possible and just go pro yeah so it really depends um for me my situation it it kind of depends on the school you go to in my opinion uh so a school like georgetown for example it's very well known for its academic like ac- academically it's one of the top schools in the nation i'd say um so for me I had opportunities to leave early, um, but after your, after about two years, I was there. I was like, you know, it's worth it to to finish and get the degree here. But there's a lot of other players that uh, they think, you know, after one year, two years, if you have the right connections, you can get into the draft early. Um, you can get what they call a Generation Adidas contract. Um, so that's like for underclassmen. That's anyone who's not a senior, like freshman, uh, sophomore, junior. Um, if I, honestly i don't know how they kind of determine these contracts or these generation adidas players but if you get one of those then you can go into the draft early otherwise you're you go into the draft when you're a senior um, okay only senior yeah oh so you can't so ga contracts generation adidas there's probably there's like a handful of them maybe up to 10 maybe um every year that so there's a a handful of players that get GA contracts. And uh-huh. then after that, it's all seniors in the draft. Crazy. Well, you was able to get one. Or you just, I, you didn't so to. I was not because I played with Portland. Okay. Wait, so save that. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, before, I think. We, before we get into that, um, I want to speak about, because you you came from Georgetown and then yeah, you signed yeah. for Crystal Palace. So I think that's one of the biggest steps that you could like possibly do because The normal flow of like youth football in Europe is like you play on the 18s, you play on the 23s, and then you go into first team. Yeah. But you went from, so like Portland on the 18s, college, Crystal Palace. How was the switch from college football to Crystal Palace? Because you're playing with still kids, you yeah, say, yeah. and then you're going into a first, like to, into a Premier League setup. So how was that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think the biggest, like anytime you, you kind of compare football and in England or in Europe to, uh, to, to the States or like whether, whether it's college or even MLS, it's always the pace of play, I think is the biggest, biggest difference. Like getting, when I first got to palace, 
it's just obviously everything is is different it's just all like for for me a player like me it's like it's almost like a dream like to like yeah. like be training on even just the training pitches you know like perfect grass stuff like this it's like you don't have all of these kind of facilities and stuff um you you can have them at points but most of the time like it's not it's not the same uh, but it's just yeah i think the the speed of play was the biggest biggest difference for me um and just the intensity of the game everything about it is just i think there's a, a lot of players that just know their role and they can they can like uh perform that at like a very high level i don't think yeah. there's a big difference in in like the quality of players you know i think it's just Players know what they need to do and they get it done and they do it at a very high level. Yeah. Uh, so That's, it's, it's interesting because I know a lot of basketball players in Belgium okay. and then they try to go to the States. You know, they, some of them go to schools and then they have the same, they, they tell the same thing that you just said, but then about basketball, but the other way around, you know, they go there and yeah. they're like, it's so fast and so physical and everybody is just ready and they play basketball all the time. But I think that that's, you know the same in Europe is like we play football all the time. We play in club. After the club, we go with our friends play football. So, to to go to a question is like, how did you in a country where it's not the primary sport, it's maybe not even a top three or top top five yeah. sports in in terms of popularity? Like, how did you fall in love with the game, or how did you decide that I'm going to to become a football yeah. player? So for me, my my dad was everything for me when it came to, to football or playing football say soccer, okay. it? <laughs> i was almost, i almost said soccer there yeah i was like i almost said it but I, I i saved myself but yeah my dad he he uh he grew up playing uh he's okay. like when you talk about love for the game like like that when i think of love for the game i think the way my dad loves the game you know okay, so dope. it's like he he from an early age like when me and my older brother he's two years older than me uh okay. from very early age he he put the ball at our feet and he had us in the backyard every day training, you know? So I think for me, that's, that's how I fell in love with the game. Um, it was just every day I was competing with my older brother, obviously to like, see who can get the most juggles. Uh, when I was five years old, I was trying to get 10 juggles and he was trying to get 10 juggles as well. But yeah, I mean, growing up, obviously it's not the most popular sport. There's American football and there's baseball, there's basketball, there's, uh, hockey like stuff like this is um so like growing up in school you never have like all like the attention like maybe some of the football players get or or american football players um but i think recently i think it's kind of especially in, even in the mls i think the fans have gotten much better um i think um the money is getting better um like they're starting to build more soccer or football based <laughs> stadiums uh um so like it, it is growing in my opinion yeah. it's growing a lot since for now maybe the last 10 years i think it's it's made a huge step um okay. so but obviously still it's not the same as yeah. not even but close. do you guys like have other opportunities to play football except school yes uh yeah this like you play for clubs um now it's more it's more uh common to get into an mls academy when you're young okay for me uh, uh, academy wasn't uh very popular growing up it was usually just playing for a club your local club team i played with um there was schultz academy there was fc florida these are just local teams that i played with um but now it's more get your try to get your kid into like a an mls academy okay. from an early age yeah. um so let's just circle back to you signed for crystal palace it wasn't your first time being in europe can you tell us about your experiences yeah so um I'd say probably the most uh, relevant one would be I did train. Don't say the full name. Don't say the show and then say the full name. Of the club? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I trained at Manchester United. <laughs> Don't say Man United. I hate uh, to do that. <laughs> so I had, I think I had just turned, I had just turned 17 or yeah, 17. I just turned 17. Uh, the plan was for me to go train with the 18s, but something, the plan they were in Slovakia, so I ended up training with the reserves. I think there were twenty ones at the time. Yeah, twenty ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that was like when you talk about experiences, that was incredible for me. Uh, they had just not not just, but their their training facility was relevantly new. I forgot what it's what is it called? Carrington. Carrington. Yeah, and it was. Yeah. Man, I was I was after training. You know, we'd go take an ice bath. I'm in the pool, and and I see like Juan Mata and. 
all these guys, David De Gea from the first team. I'm like, am I really sitting here right now with these guys? Like, <laughs> it was crazy. But uh, I, I did play, I'd say, like, in terms of me going on trial in Europe, that was probably the best performance I've had um, okay. when I was growing up. And obviously, it was being American, it's tough to get the whole passport situation. Um, so that's at, at the end of the day, that was the reason I couldn't stay there. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really good. So how did Man United find you in the US? Was it scouting? Did it you wasn't, play tournaments? So I, it was actually through a family friend. And he had, uh, I, won, I, won I think, I think it was, I know, I know it's crazy. <laughs> hey, your family was one. <laughs> so I think his brother actually had like owned some stock or something like 2% or I don't know. Oh, like that. them ones. <laughs> so that's how we got connected. Um, and I had a highlight video at the time. They sent it to him and they said, yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll have him in for, for a couple of weeks. And that's, that's just, that's how I went. Um, so yeah. We need to get in touch with your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I need to skip. Oh. I need to skip my friends. Yeah, I need yeah, his yeah. friends. Bro, the only thing I'm getting from my friends is foods. I don't want your shit foods. <laughs> nah, but um, can I just um? So you've been at wait. Now I forgot my question. I have a question. Yeah. Like when you were at Manchester United, I yeah, probably. just only yeah. for you. Yeah. Like, was that the moment when you realized that oh, I might like this might be what I will do for a living? Or did you have it earlier? Did you have it? Yeah. No, I'd say I had it. In terms of making this like my life kind of, I think it's been from a very early age. Yeah. Because I just, you know, I, I joke with my friends. I'm like, even being at Georgetown, you know, like usually these guys that go to Georgetown, they have really good degrees after and like they can kind of get a job. But in my head, I'm like, I can't see myself doing anything else. You know, yeah. it's like, I, I don't want to be working like at an office right now or anything like that. You know, I was like, there's literally nothing else that I would see myself doing besides playing soccer or football. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was from an early age, and I think. at that early age, were you thinking about, I have to make it out of these states? Or were you thinking about, I have to go to the MLS? Yeah, so... Yeah, go on, go on. So, um, I think when, I'm, when you're really young, you know, like you have these dreams of playing in Europe, obviously. Like, yeah. you're watching the best teams in the world, Barcelona and Madrid. I was actually, when I was really, really young, I was a Real Madrid fan, which is kind of crazy now because now I'm like a diehard Barca fan. But that's just growing up. Yeah. yeah that's you know. becoming smaller. You know why? It was because my favorite player was Beckham and he was on that team. He was on Madrid at the time. Okay. So. Um, but yeah, so at an early age, I think I, w I wanted to like, like everyone's dream, you know, you want to go to Europe. But I think when I got to college by that time and I was in the Portland system, Portland Timbers, the MLS Academy, I think. I was like, you know, the most realistic situation for me now is to play in MLS, you know? Yeah. Um, but when the Palace opportunity, it just came up and I was like, you know, obviously I can't say no to this. Uh, so it was kind of, it, it was fortunate and obviously it worked out for now. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to try to see what I can do with it. I remember my question. Yeah. So you didn't sign for United because you had issues with your passport. Yeah. Now you signed for Palace. You had the same issues. Um, same thing when you even had to sign here for Wasa yeah, Bevera. Yeah. Um, what kind of issues did you actually like, um, got into, how did you solve it? What was needed for you? Like what, what are the requirements for you to sign actually in Europe as an American player? Yeah. Cause I don't think a lot of people know what you actually need to do. Cause you told me you had to go back for FBI checks, for example. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so when I got to Pal, I think the reason I couldn't sign for United at the time was cause I was under 18. Um, so when I, I got to Palace, they were allowed to sign me. I don't think there was a problem with them signing me, but um, I, I just, there's a, I physically can't play in England until I get uh, a work visa for England. Um, and the only way to do that really is to, you have to go through the system of getting points. Uh, I forgot, GDP points or something like that. Yeah. Um, and you can do that by playing in leagues, like in other leagues. Uh, it's obviously you get the most points by playing in like the higher leagues, like, you know, the top five leagues. Um, and I think you have to accumulate like a certain amount of points in order to get a work visa in England. So I think for Palace and for my situation now, like playing in second division Belgium, it's not going to get me all the points that I need. I, mean, my, I don't know how much it's going to get me actually, but um, I think this is more of like, they want to see how I adapt to the European game. They want to yeah. see... Because when I that's uh, when I got to Palace, they 
like they like what they saw from when I was training there, but they wanted to see me like in a league and playing week in week out. So um, I think this is more of like kind of like a trial year in, in terms you can say that. Um, but yeah, I mean, but do you don't like don't you feel some type of pressure because it's a one year deal? Yeah, definitely. It so. is. So I think that's that's why I said it's like a trial year. It's like it, like I kind of have this year to prove that I can do well in Europe. Um, so I do feel pressure, but I mean, you also have to think about like, I'm blessed to be in a situation like this. Um, so there's not like, you feel the pressure obviously, but you just want to do what you can with it and yeah. see what happens. Yeah. So to follow up, so you said, <laughs> cause you, you were saying, um, for kids now it's normal to go into an MLS Academy and then go all the way. I remember when I spoke to you at Portland, cause that's where we met. Yeah. I told you, yo, you have to go pro, you have to go pro. And he was like, nah, I'm, I'm going college. And I was like, this guy's crazy. Like you're, <laughs> you're smoking something. Yeah. But then once I, once I got older, I understood how the, the whole thing went. So you was at Portland Timbers too. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever get the opportunity, oh, the opportunity to sign for the first team during that period? I, I, before I went to college, there wasn't a first team contract. There was a T2 contract, which is why I was, uh, more inclined to go to Georgetown. Um, they yeah. they did offer a T2 contract, yeah. but I just didn't think it was going to be the best situation for me at the time. Uh, and then obviously when, when I talked to my family about it, they had a, a big part in me kind of making that decision. My older brother, especially because he's a very, uh, he's like a very book books guy, you know, right. like he's very smart, he's very educated. And when he heard, like I had an opportunity to go to Georgetown, he's like, bro, you're not going to take that. You're like, he's like, are you crazy? He like, he was looking at me. He's like, are you crazy? I was like, full ride. Huh? Yeah, it was a full ride. So he's like, yeah, he's like, you have to do, you have to take that because it's, you know, good opportunity. Yeah, for sure. But then you didn't get drafted. I didn't get drafted because I was a, a homegrown player to Portland Timbers. So the MLS, the way it works, if you play in the academy, you're considered their homegrown player. Okay. So once you're a homegrown player, they have, they, they own your rights. Um, so for college players, like it's, it can be a good situation. Or it can also be like a kind of a iffy situation because like for me, for example, um, my s junior year, I had a very good year, I think. And, uh, that's when Portland, they offered me a first team contract. Um, but at the time, like I said, it was my junior year. I wanted to finish school at the time. And we had, we had come to an agreement that I was going to wait one more year, uh, so I can get my degree. Um, but obviously when the senior year, when my senior year came, that was when I was allowed to be in the draft. If, uh, Portland, like Portland had first say on whatever. So, um, they made the decision to, they're like, they told the MLS, they said, no, we want to, we want to keep them. We probably want to bring them in, uh, for preseason with the first team. Um, so don't let them go into the draft. So for me, Kind of crazy. Crazy. It's crazy, That's you know, crazy. it's crazy. You and then the MLS basically has, owns your rights. Yes. So you can't That's even crazy. Well, you play mad and you can't even go into the draft. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. It, 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 that's the, it's, it's a whole other system. It can be, a, yeah, it can be good for certain players, you know, like, um, like there's a lot of players that sign homegrown contracts. That's what they, they call them, homegrown contracts. Okay. Like for any academy player that signs with the first team. Um, for me, I, I didn't, you know, like it could be either way, you know, I didn't want to take the homegrown contract my junior year and then, um, and then senior year, it was more, I kind of, I think it would have been better if I was going to be into the draft because I think I could have been a higher, like one of the higher draft picks that year. Um, but Portland, it, it was just, it didn't work out. And then, you know, uh, I was saying to everyone top five, I, top I mean, five pick. I don't know, to be honest, I'm not sure. I thought um, so. Cause you're from, yeah, from what I was, from what I was, uh, being told it could have been top five or top 10. Um, but cause in 2019, you was <clears throat> all American, all East region first team, uh, big East midfield of the year, big East all conference first team, uh, college soccer news, national play of the week, top drawer soccer, national play of the week, top drawer, um, ranked 11th in the play nation. And then in 2017, you was Big East All-Freshman First Team. And you've won uh, NCAA Championship. 
Yeah. First one in Georgetown history. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there was um. You got a you have a big ring. Yeah, we got. Yeah, I want I want to know about like the like, rings and stuff because, <laughs> because yeah, just the whole you know the whole experience like yeah, yeah. you guys in Europe we we we're like you know you guys are athletes yeah, scholarships you get all the girls <laughs> you have fun the parties yeah that's how we see it you know we yeah, yeah, we know the shits from from yeah. movies you know yeah but how is it to to go to a school like that and to win like a national championship like what was the reception what happens it was I mean <laughs> bro it was. I obviously it meant a lot more because it was the first time that yeah. our program ever did it. Um, but yeah, it's you know when you get back on the bus. Um, well, actually, first of all, when when the game was going on, the national finals, there was a a lot of uh, students. They gathered in a uh, in our student center, um, yeah. and they all they were watching the game, and they have a video of when we our goalie makes the final save for the penalty shootout, and we win, and then everyone was just you know it was penalty shootout. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> bro. No, Wait, but what did you say? How did you say? say PKs and it's mad? No, no, but I mean, like, no, I'm not. I'm that not. Right, the the, the no, way, no, no, the, the I'm way not, it ended. Yeah. I'm not laughing with how you said it. I'm just imagining like you win the championship oh, the penalty okay, okay. shootout. How, how would you say? Nah, how, how would nah, you say yeah. penalty shootout? That's fine. No, nah, but PKs, normally yeah. they say PKs, and I, I get, I get PKs, nah, PKs. We won in PK. Penalty kicks, yeah. Oh, shit. That's yeah. nasty. It's just like a... So when he said penalty shooter, I was actually happy that he said that. Because <laughs> normally he says PK, I'm like, bro, listen, you're in Europe now, adapt, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't do this all the time. No, nah, but yeah. So, I mean, that, and then when we got back to campus, it was like, incredible, bro. Like, we walked in to the same center, and when we walk in, everyone was there. The trophy was there. Uh, oh. Well, actually, no, we, we came in with the trophy, like, holding it up, and everyone was like, yeah, you know. So it was, oh. His ring is big. The, yeah, we Pulse. also get rings. So we uh we got the ring that we got for the national championship was yeah. <laughs> incredible, bro. It's I have it at my house. I wish I would I would have brought it, but makes that my brother ring is big. He showed me when my there. when my family comes, I'll have them bring the ring so I can have it here. But it, yeah, I have we'll, pictures and stuff. We'll post it on bro, I'm, cause I'm 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 a wild guy. Yeah, they know, yeah. so I I think I would have ended up in the nah, hospital yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> there was nah, there was we we did we did a lot of celebrating for that. After but won, yeah. after you win the championship, yeah. what's the pressure that comes with it? Because now you know, like he yeah. he he gave like all the accolades and everything that that you've accomplished at a very young age. Yeah, but and and maybe I don't know if it, if there's a difference between Europe and the states. But after you've done this, like how do they look at you? You know, he's saying yeah. like, yeah, you should have been a top five draft pick. Like, what's the pressure? At I mean, how old were you? Eighteen, nineteen? Yeah. So I was. Uh, hold on, junior year, I was 20. 21. But yeah, so that was after that year. Um, I think going into my senior year, so we were, uh, they have like, you know, preseason rankings for players. Yeah. Um, on this, on a website for the college players. And I was going into senior year, I was ranked number one. So like when I saw that, I was like, you know, I was, I was like excited, but it was also like, damn, now yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot of expectations, I feel like. And I think that I let that get to my head a little bit going into my senior year. Okay. Um, and then also everything going on with the draft, you know, it was like it, with the whole COVID, everything was completely like different. Um, and I, I'm not going to say I played bad my senior year. I, I still did well. And, but it just like I, I don't think I didn't feel the same as I did the year before because I think because of this, this pressure that I put yeah. on myself. I think it was more me doing it to myself than anything else mentally. Okay. But yeah, there was a lot of pressure, I'd say, for after that year. Yeah. So what was your last game that you played for Georgetown? Last game was against UConn. Then you went it, Dallas? Yeah. And you played your first game for Mozambique. First you played against a lower team, but then you played against French champions Lille. How was that? Yeah, yeah. That was, I mean, if obviously we didn't have we weird. didn't have much of the ball, but it was it was <laughs> it was really it was cool to be in the stadium for the first time and uh and playing against like you know, like we try to press them and the quality that they had on the ball was just it was too good for us on the day. As I would think, yeah, eight months ago you was playing against people that yeah. Like trying to get the degrees, and now you're playing against <laughs> yeah, exactly. the champions of France yeah. that are playing Champions League next year. Yeah, that's insane, bro. Bad. No, it was yeah. They have a nice team, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? A nice team. Like. Yeah, <laughs> they, they do. We we were just talking after the game, actually. Uh, Angel Gomez, huh? He was yeah. he had yeah, a really yeah. good game, like the bad boy. Yeah, he's good, man. Good. So, 
Um, I also saw that you are eligible to play for the US and yes. for Nicaragua. Yes. Did I say that correctly? Nicaragua, yeah. Nicaragua, Nicaragua if you want to be like Nicaragua. Uh, <laughs> yes, when he said Juan Mata, and yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, so yeah, hey, I saw Juan Mata. Wait, this I, don't, guy, I don't speak Spanish, this guy don't speak but I, I think I can have a decent okay. accent, you know? But have you considered both? So I think recently, kind of the the Nicaraguan national team has, has um, It came up recently because I act, I recently got my my Nicaraguan passport. Okay. So once people found out like I was from Nicaragua, it was crazy, bro. Like uh, on Facebook, I was getting all these friend requests from all these like Nicaraguan <laughs> people, and like and they have like these like news pages for like uh, for like football players from Nicaragua, and like they started posting me all over, and I'm like, bro, like it was, yeah. it was crazy. But um, I think. If I had the choice, if I had a choice now, I obviously I would think I would want to play for the U.S. Yeah. Um, but you never like it's it's so difficult to get into the system sometimes. Um, I mean, I think if I if I if I think if I do well in Europe, uh, then I'll have a better chance. Um, if things might not go as planned, and and then I maybe I go back to MLS. Um, then yeah, Nicaragua is, is definitely an option. Oh. Um, just to get you know international caps. I think that was going to be, be my option. next question. Like. Are you thinking about like, okay, I want to stay in Europe? Or are you in the back of your head thinking about like, mm, I still want to end up in the MLS? Yeah. Uh, it's, I think if, you know, if I'm doing well and because it's just the atmosphere of the game here is so much better. You know, it's, and as I said, the MLS is growing and like, obviously it's still a really good life to play in the MLS, you know, but I, I just think like the love for the game here is different. Uh, so I, But it's it's also like living living yeah, at home. home. Yeah, you know, course. I have my family, my friends, everyone's home. Um, that's also like another reason, and then maybe I would want to go to the MLS. Yeah. Um, or that's another reason I wouldn't be upset playing in the MLS. You know, yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> and but, uh, in the US, like, do you experience um, when you, you go from conference to conference? Do you experience like different styles of playing? Because here in Europe, you've been yeah. to the UK, you've been to Germany. Um, It's it's different. If yeah, you go yeah. to Germany, you go to Spain, you go to Italy. Yeah. Like it's different types of football. Like, do you experience the same thing in the U.S. or is it kind of all the same style of football? <sighs> I think when you're talking about the college game, and then like the MLS, I think MLS is is pretty similar. Like throughout the okay. you know, because I mean it, it is all like American soccer kind yeah. of. Um, I think um, in college there's some teams that want to you know play keep the ball and there's also a lot of teams that are very direct long balls you know growing up you always heard college was like very direct very fast paced um but like for, for for example georgetown we my coach like when i got there i loved it because he like he liked to keep the ball he liked to play possession so but i think when you get to the mls it's very technical um i think play, players and coaches like to keep the ball so yeah i think uh that's It's all. I think it's all pretty consistent though throughout the MLS. Um, there's something that we know from basketball uh, called AAU basketball. Is there something similar in the, in the US? AAU basketball. What do you mean? AAU. Come on, bro. You're American yourself. Bro, I'm not. When they take well, all like, the best players like from during the summer yeah. when there's oh, like no okay, school okay, and okay. stuff, like they have like tournaments. AAU. They go you, from, you know, I, bro. I don't like pay attention to really? other sports. To be honest, <laughs> I've always been just like strictly. No other sport. I mean, I like American football. No. Baseball, wow. no. Wow. Basketball is the only other sport like I like watch and enjoy or like. What's your team? Basketball. Yeah. I mean, I, I was born in California, and my uh, when I yeah, hey, when, yeah, yeah. when I grew up, the my finish. my my dad always supported the Lakers, so uh, I, was, I became a Lakers fan. I love Kobe when I was growing up. Happy so. birthday, Kobe! By yes, the way, happy birthday, Kobe! Rest in peace. Obviously, depends on when it comes out, though. Oh, but I don't care. It's Kobe. <laughs> happy birthday. Every Kobe. day is Mamba Day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're from um, Cali, actually. I was born in California. Yeah. California, no. But I moved to I moved to Florida when I was young, so I grew up most of my life. I grew up in Florida and South okay. Florida. Okay, so I have to ask, how is living in Florida? It's because yeah. obviously this is a football interview, but yeah, yeah, like yeah. as I told you, <laughs> <laughs> well, where did you live again? Close I lived you? I lived in uh, in West Palm Beach, Boynton Beach area. So I, I was like 10 minutes. <laughs> I just I just heard beach. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was like I'm like 10 minutes from the water, and but. Life, right? I like I don't think I don't think I really appreciate it until I left. Yeah. You know. 
Whether, uh, whether there's shit here, a lot, yeah, of, here, a lot of rain. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, Florida's not like, it's nice. Like there, you have your really nice days, obviously, but mm -hmm. it'll get really hot and then some, it'll just start pouring and then it'll be hot and pouring and then. Yeah, man. It doesn't but, get hot here. It just pours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's nice. It's nice to be close to the water for sure, I'd say. And then What's what's the MLS team in Florida? There's Inter Miami. Uh, and there's Orlando City. I think that's only, there's only two, yeah. You, Becca played for you Orlando City. You couldn't have signed for one of those. <laughs> well, Inter Miami is pretty new. Um, so, like, that's the thing. Like, I couldn't... And Beckham is your idol. Yes, that is fact. But... What? But don't lie now. Being a Portland homegrown, no other MLS team is really allowed to touch you. So, but they tried. I heard allegedly. Orla huh? Who Orlando? No, into Miami. What? See that if I was into the if I were to go to the draft, if Portland allowed me to go to the draft, then they had number like ten, I think number ten pick. So it, that would have been a possibility. But yeah. is it like an official rule or is it like a? No, that's an official rule. Like if you're an MLS homegrown to like a, the no yeah. other team is really allowed. Oh. To, and they have to like so give the, you the, permission. the way it would work yeah so the way it would work is if say orlando or miami wanted uh to get my homegrown rights yeah they would have to pay portland a certain amount of money to get my homegrown I, rights and they can say how much they want yeah i mean typically it, it really depends like you would have to get a team really interested in you yeah like another team to kind of make that mm. payment you know so you never got like uh, an offer from into miami so my sources are wrong offer from Inter just before you left the palace that's what I heard from I a source from palace so. right now he's doing like ghetto journalism <laughs> so I don't yeah, know yeah I don't know I don't know I what his source nah? is nah the source is, is I never no is, I never got like a, at palace. I never got like a direct like okay offer from Inter so palace. where's your rights right now right now it's with New England uh, so they bought so it so what happened was <laughs> he's confused huh <laughs> what happened was Portland so Portland wanted me to come into preseason with okay. the first team, but I I just thought it wasn't like the best situation for me to do that because if I were to stay in school, then obviously other teams were going to get interested. And Portland had a deadline to either offer me a contract or to waive my rights. And that's when another team was allowed to come in and offer me a contract. Uh, so when they waive my rights, then another club has the opportunity to get my rights. So, so it's like my it. rights can go from, you know... No, so at that point, my rights were free because okay. Portland waived, waived them. them yeah. So, so the, but how, went, how, like, who, does, who, who decides who gets it first? Is it like I think first it's come, first serve? I, I, I don't know. Oh, I weird. don't know how it works, man. I don't know, to be honest. I think it's just... It's complicated. If the club... It's weird. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's weird, yeah, but... Uh, I might have to come to the US I think it's weird there, because yeah. it's like, they decide where you're going. So if you want to go back now, you have to go to, to New York. No, New England Revolution first. Yeah. So now if I were to go back to MLS, now it's like, the situation I had it with Portland is now with New England. Now they have my homegrown rights. So let's say you wanted to sign for Inter Miami because it's close to home or Orlando. Yeah, yeah. And now you have to go Boston first. They would have to go through in New England, I think. They would say no. European player. It I would say no. I mean, it, yeah, it, it really depends on how I'm performing at the time, I think. And like, if New England think it would be worth to keep me or not, or, the, you know, like, I, obviously if I have a couple good seasons in Europe and I end up going back to the MLS, then I'll be worth more, I think, so. Uh, I can't really say what's going to happen. It's going to be... That's crazy, man. It's crazy, yeah. That's crazy. So basically, the plan is to whoop ass here. Yes. And go to the UK and whoop ass again. Yeah. And then when you become a superstar and you go to the US and you go back to Florida, you invite us. So we can <laughs> do, like, episode... He's stuck like, on Florida. Yeah, bro. Man, listen. Uh, listen, I've been in Belgium my whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cold. No, for sure, bro. It's cold. Like, we did... We, like, when's the last time we had a summer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time. We like, had two days. <laughs> this year we had two nah, days. No, bro, I've been here. I've been here the past few months, bro. It bro hasn't been the best. Last summer was pre-COVID. What's the best yeah. thing you have you've had in Belgium? What do you mean? Anything. Best thing Food, I've had. Food, drink, place. I mean, you you got me that Belgian waffle that was pretty fire. I'm not gonna Great. lie. Where? 
Uh, okay, what, okay, what uh, Abraham, was, Abraham Australian, sorry. <laughs> was it Australian? Australian, bro. Oh, man. I mean, it was good. Nah, I, have to bring, I, have I put Nutella. Nutella. I put nah, but I told him, I told him, I told him, I told him. Okay. But I said, we had no time. We go and <laughs> right now. <laughs> like, like, he's going to take it to Brussels. He's going to call me. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. No, because remember, remember that one... Sp- you went. You wanted to go somewhere, and uh, oh, oh, that's him. Yeah, him. Okay. yeah. Okay, okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. We're not saying. No <laughs> Listen, I got you. As long as I you're bet, in Belgium, bet, bet. we got you. Yeah, say less. I don't have any questions left. I don't know if you have any questions nah, I'm left. Done. I know this is not how you end an interview normally, but we do. We will oh, right, get up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fine. really want to thank you for passing by. Thank you for sharing your story. Uh, thank you for teaching us a bit about system even though it's complicated yeah. and um the mls can contact us so we can come and simplify football for you guys <laughs> and make it a, a better place for everybody and more enjoyable why is it every every show you you suggest cool cost consultancy why you do because i have to retire at 33 <laughs> so i need to make money what now. Age you right now 25 all right so he's got yeah, eight, eight years, years, years left eight uh, years. Yeah. and then i will go to florida <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Hey, uh, I'm I'm happy to have you guys. And I'll work on. Honest, oh no, you guys have alligators. We do have alligators. Yeah, I'm that's another. Oh, thing, really? Though. We have like, I like literally. Oh, they got the big ones. Oh, the thing is, like, even oh yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember. It, even because one was one was loose at um, Disney. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, even in like even in, bro, if you go to like neighborhoods like my neighborhood, like we have lakes, you know. Yeah. And like, like there's been instances where. In, where a gator is just crawling in someone's backyard. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You can go LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but, uh, yeah, yeah. So in, my, in, in my life, that's never happened to us. So. Yeah, I'm not. But it's, it, it has happened, though. Do they know. have them in Cali? Gators? Yeah. Uh, not just oh, sharks, nah, isn't nah, it? Nah, yeah, I mean, you know, sharks in the yeah, ocean. Yeah, yeah, I'll do sharks. Sharks. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll do okay, sharks. I'll do sharks. Not alligators, though. Yeah, because I don't really go swimming. That's crazy. No, but Jacob, thank you. Brian, thank you. we here. Um... How true? Touching it. Touching it. Bedankt om te kijken. En tot de volgende keer. Graag gedaan. Graag gedaan. Dit was cool, Casper. <laughs> yeah, yeah.